a saw, uh, the front of the firearm, um, the audience would think that it was absolutely a loaded firearm, but um, the dummy rounds typically for us as the crew um, are, are different than the blanks in that they may appear as though they're a, a real um, bullet, but they would typically have a hole drilled in them or the primer at the end that would ignite that bullet would be removed or already be uh, pushed in. Um, and then sometimes the dummies, uh, depending on how they're being used in the film, you can't make holes in them. So what the, uh, I guess the props people that make them put a little BB in there. So the armor can shake that dummy and you would hear a little BB rattle in there and that's supposed to let us know that that um, particular bullet or round is safe. So is this the information that you would receive at a safety meeting? Um, both at a safety meeting and I believe some of this is stated in the, the um, safety bulletins put out by IOTSI. And what is IOTSI? Oh, uh, IOTSI is the union we m most filmmakers belong to. It's um, International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. And do actors also belong to IOTSI? Uh, typically, no. Do they have their own union? They, I believe they refer to it as a guild, but they would be the Screen Actors Guild is what the actors typically belong to, yes. Is IOTSI the union for crew members as opposed to cast? It is, yes. Okay. Um, now, the, the call sheet and the email and the safety bulletin that you've referred to, in your experience, who provides that to, to the, the cast and crew? Is it the armor? Uh, no, that's generated by production. Is someone in in production would okay. generate that and uh, get it out to us in any whether it's an email or given to us on set so Ms. Gutierrez wouldn't have been responsible for that not in my no not okay. not with what I know and you indicated that in terms of safety meetings the safety meetings are called by the assistant director and not the armorer is that correct that is correct um, with regard to safety bulletins. Was there a difference between the way that safety bulletins were handled on the set of Rust and the way that safety bulletins were handled on the other films you participated in that had firearms and armorers? Yes. Tell us the difference. So in those emails that I referred to earlier, um, it typically would say, please, you know, would ask us to please refer to uh, the appropriate safety bulletins, and then they would list the number of that bulletin, and then in that email, I'd be able to click on a link if I so chose to review that bulletin. Um, I don't recall any of those bulletins actually being attached to our um, emails during Rust. You don't recall ever getting a single one? I don't recall ever receiving a safety bulletin from Rust Productions, no. Let's jump to safety meetings. Um, on the other sets that you worked on that had guns and armorers, how frequently would a safety meeting occur? Um, at least once a day, if not more frequently. And on the set of Rust, how frequently did safety meetings occur? I don't know that I was invited to more than one during our couple of weeks on Rust. So for the entire two weeks, you only were, were you are only aware of one safety meeting? That's my recollection, yes. Okay, so we've talked about safety bulletins and safety meetings. Go ahead and continue to walk us through, um, in your experience, the protocol of an armor with firearms. Um, in my experience, the, the armors are usually the, uh, well, for lack of a better description, the most um, uptight and anal retentive people on set because they literally have people's lives in their hands. 
Um, they don't joke around. They don't really have friendly conversations. They stick to themselves and um, focus on the task at hand. Um, most of them, in my experience, seem to be either former military or law enforcement and have some sort of background with firearms. Um, Did you notice a, a difference then generally in terms of just the um, behavior, the general behavior on the movie set of the other armors you worked with as compared to Ms. Gutierrez? Uh, yes. What was that? Um, she wasn't necessarily as uh, serious or professional as I'm accustomed to with the other armors that I've worked with. What do you mean? Give us an example. Um, I recall walking by her uh, cart a number of times and firearms and or uh, bandoliers or ammo belts being left out on the cart uh, unsecured. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen an armor pull loose ammo out of a fanny pack. Typically, my experience with armors is um, any ammo they use, blanks or dummies comes out of some sort of container, whether it's a labeled box or um, some other plastic type ammo container, so. Um, now, in terms of, you, you indicated that you would see uh, firearms and gun belts unattended on the cart. Um, why was that, why did that stand out to you? It, it was out of the ordinary. Um, again, my experience is, is most of the firearms I've seen on set come out of some sort of locked bag, locked container. Um, the armor, some armors, depending on the show, have a whole uh, wheel around, cart with drawers that they can lock, uh, a drawer that potentially has the individual actor's uh, or character's name on that drawer. Um, so that character's props would live in that drawer under lock and key. Were the guns and gun belts laying out unattended on the prop cart, was that a safety concern for you? Yes. Why? Uh, it seemed inappropriate and out of the ordinary um, that those firearms weren't secured. And why is it concerning that the firearms aren't secured? Um, well, I don't know that they're completely under the armor's control if they're not under lock and key. And what's your understanding of whether those firearms that you saw unattended, were they fake guns or were they real guns? Um, my understanding, uh, most of the prop firearms we had on Rust were actual um, working firearms, so. Okay. Now, based on your experience, just generally, what is the armor responsible for? Your Honor, again, this is expert testimony. He's a camera operator, and he's asking to give expert testimony on what armor is He's not, sorry. This is based upon his personal experience only, and as long as it stays there, it's fine. Go ahead, sir. Um, if you don't mind the question again, please. Um, what is your understanding, based on your experience, of the armorer's responsibilities on a movie set? Um, to control and keep safe all um, firearms and ammunition on, on a given set. Okay. Go ahead and, and walk us through, if you will, what, what in your experience uh, are the safety checks that take place when an armorer is bringing a firearm onto the set for filming? Um, typically the first AD, the first assistant director, would notify us that we're going to um, use firearms uh, for a scene uh, 
whether they're loaded or not, they would say something um, about the fact that we're bringing something that's uh, uh, maybe not a rubber dummy, but an actual firearm onto set. And then typically um, the armorer would invite the first AD, the cast members involved, and any crew that would like to see both the firearm and the ammunition to see those safety checks. Um, whether that's uh, looking through the barrel, um, shaking those rounds we discussed, the dummy rounds to hear that BB, or explaining to us that um, we are going to, the actor is going to fire X number of blanks and they're going to be of a certain power. And, and then making sure that um, anybody that's going to be in close proximity has the appropriate uh, safety equipment they need and they're prepared for that moment on camera. So what you just described regarding the armorer um, showing the gun and allowing people to look down the barrel, why would that be important to crew members? Um, because unfortunately there have been accidents in the past where the barrels weren't cleaned in firearms and a blank was fired and whatever debris was in that barrel injured or killed somebody on set. So with regard to your experiences with Ms. Gutierrez, uh, were the cast and crew ever invited to look down the barrel? Um, not to my recollection. And was that concerning to you? It was. Why? Um, well, they call them safety checks for a reason, and we were moving, uh, moving through those instead of pausing to, to have those checks. Um, with regard to the sequence that you described where the armorer uh, shows the dummy rounds to the cast and crew, um, and I want to be clear, in your experience, does the armor hand you the dummy round or the blank so that you can shake it? Uh, no, I'm not actually allowed to touch the firearms or ammo. So if, if um, a particular round was in question, we could ask um, uh, for them to you know, show us that it is uh, one type of round or another. And with regard to dummies, it, how would the armor do that? Um, again, the, the, in my experience, the way the dummy rounds are manufactured, um, you would have one of potentially three indicators um, that it is not a live round. Um, one being a hole drilled in potentially one side or, or two sides of the brass, so you'd actually see a hole in the bullet. Um, uh, sometimes the primer is either already um, struck by something or it's removed altogether, uh, prim the primer being the end of the bullet, um, or they would um, shake them like a, you'd hear like a rattle because there's a BB inside that brass or steel case. Who is the person responsible for shaking them for you or showing them to you? Uh, the armor. And on the set of Rust, did Ms. Gutierrez do any of that? Uh, not, not that I recall. In your experience on other movies, is the gun, wh when is the gun loaded with the ammunition by the armorer? A and and let, me, let, let me kind of make that more pointed. Is that something that's done away in secret or is that something that's done in front of cast and crew? Uh, bless you. Uh, no, in my experience, um, it would be within moments of that uh, safety check where the cast and or crew are invited to see that firearm. They would then um, load that firearm knowing that we're about to roll the camera. Um, some armors uh, 
for reasons unknown to me, would in fact not even hand that firearm to the actor. They would actually place that firearm in the actor's holster and then indicate to the first assistant director that they're good to go. And then the assistant director typically would call rolling at that point. So the gun is generally, in your previous experience, loaded with either the dummies or the blanks right there in front of cast and crew. Correct. Um, is that a practice that Ms. Gutierrez followed? Uh, I, uh, not to my recollection. Do you recall ever watching her uh, or taking note of her loading the gun in the presence of cast or crew? I think there were a couple of times on set where we were doing these quick resets instead of cutting the camera where she was put in a position to reload that as quickly as she could and hand it back to our actors. And when you say she was put in a position, who would have put her in that position? Um, in that particular instance, both um, the first assistant director that's in charge of safety and um, the actor producer, Alec Baldwin. And with regard to your experience on other movies, have you ever seen an armor slow down that pace so that they are not being rushed? Yes. Did Ms. Gutierrez ever take any steps to slow those things down if she was being rushed? Not that I ever saw. Give me just one moment. <clears throat> Were you present for the filming of every scene that was filmed on the set of Rust during those two weeks? I believe I was present for every scene, maybe not every take. And when you say take, Explain to the jurors what you're talking about. Um, so uh, the scene may require a couple of, uh, each time we roll the camera and cut, that would be considered one take. So depending on what uh, the director was, was wanting or if the actors maybe weren't happy with their performance, um, we would potentially do multiple takes as we worked our way through the different angles of a scene. So it may be from one actor to the next, you know, we shoot one uh, direction <coughs> and do a couple of takes with one actor and then change directions and perhaps a couple of takes with the next actor that's um, in that same scene with them. So with regard to the individual takes that were recorded, were you present for every single take that was filmed? I was not. Approximately, if you can give us a percentage, uh, what percentage of those individual takes were you present for? Mm, uh, I think it would be safe to say I was there for 95% or more of them. Okay. In terms of the way that you've experienced this on, on other movie sets, um, how does the armorer behave with regard to, if the armorer provides a gun to an actor, in your experience on other movie sets, does the armorer just walk away? In my experience, the armor is never out of uh, eyesight of whatever um, weapons or ammo they're in charge of. Was that the case on the set of Rust? It was not. Um, describe to us what you saw on the set of Rust with regard to that particular issue, that being the armor always staying within 
eyesight of the gun? Um, I did. I don't know that the armor was always within eyesight um, of the firearms being used on set. Okay. And do you recall um, being present on the set of rust on a day where there were what I'm going to refer to as accidental discharges of guns. Yes. Um, can you describe the first accidental discharge that you recall happening? Um, I think the first one was the, um, I don't know if the prop master was loading or unloading. And let me stop you. What's the prop master's name? Um, Sarah, I think her name was Sarah Zachary. I okay. That was her name. Um, she was, we were, we were outside of the character Rust's cabin, and I don't know if she was loading or unloading a handgun, but um, unannounced to any of the crew, that firearm discharged. So we consider that a negligent discharge. And how did you know it discharged? I was within feet of it, and she seemed pretty spooked when I turned around, and it appeared as though she had um, shot that firearm at her foot. Can you tell us in your, in your experience, in your opinion, what you think that gun was loaded with? I, it, it made a bang, but it didn't, you know, I don't know if there was a bullet or not, because I don't know if it hit her foot um, but it certainly made a loud noise that spooked us and the animals we had on set i think we had a couple of horses on set and uh, and again it was unannounced so it was a surprise to everybody that was around were you preparing to film a, a scene or a take at that time um yes um was it announced by anyone whether the guns were going to be loaded with dummies or blanks I don't think at that moment it had been, no. Okay. Um, the So when that accidental discharge happened, I mean, what did it sound like? Uh, a gun going off. Okay. And you indicated that this accidental discharge occurred because that gun was being loaded or unloaded by the prop master Sarah Zachary, is that right? That's correct. In your previous experiences on other movie sets with armorers, did you ever see the prop master loading and unloading the guns? I've never seen that, no. And can you describe what the other accidental discharge was that happened? Um, so like I had stated, we were uh, kind of outside the cabin we were using as Harlan Rust's uh, cabin. And I'm going to stop you real quick. Uh, who's Harlan Rust? Um, Harlan Rust is the lead character um, in the movie, and that was played by uh, Mr. Alec Baldwin. Okay, please continue. Um, um, I believe it was um, Alec's uh, stunt double, so somebody dressed up to look like Alec, um, was going to be firing either some sort of long gun. I don't remember if it was a lever action gun or a shotgun, something out of uh, the window of the can, uh, cabin towards, um, I, I think it was the law enforcement that were chasing him, that were starting to catch up with him. There was supposed to be a gun uh, some gunfire, and um, I believe that um, uh, uh, Hannah was prepping the stunt double in the cabin with that firearm, and uh, again, unannounced to any of us outside the cabin, um, that firearm was discharged. And what did it sound like? Uh, a loud, 
um, gun going off. And if you can estimate, how much time passed between the first of these accidental discharges and the second? Uh, my recollection is it was they were within an hour of one another. And in your experience on other movies with armorers, uh, are accidental discharges common? Um, no. Have you ever experienced an accidental discharge on another movie? I don't know that I have. <laughs> <laughs>